to give a shout out to my wife who's watching from home <clears throat> and uh hope she's feeling better when we get back we'll say a prayer for all those that's under the weather right now <clears throat> some things are going around i understand hallelujah but uh we're here amen, amen. hallelujah <clears throat> and if uh I start coughing and stuff through this. Uh, just bear with me. But, um, amen. Hallelujah. Let me adjust this. I think you can come and get it, Tosh. Amen. Let's get into the Word of God tonight. <clears throat> and uh, I don't know how <clears throat> uh, in-depth this is going to be or... Um, how well this is going to go, but if the anointing gets on it, it'll be all right. Amen. And we're going to need the anointing tonight. Hallelujah. <coughs> Amen. If you have your Bibles and you want to look in your Bibles or you just want to look on the screen, we'll be in Mark chapter 4, starting out. And we'll hang out around Mark uh, for a little bit, probably throughout the whole uh, teaching tonight, except for one little trip to the Old Testament and then back to Mark. Um, but tonight uh, I have kind of a long title for this. Uh, I didn't really know what else to call it, but we're going to talk about seed time and harvest, the process of faith. I know when you say seed time and harvest, people think money, but we're going to talk about faith tonight. Seed time and harvest, and we're going to talk about the process of faith. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Let's read in here um, and then we'll pray. Mark chapter 4, verse 26. If you're ready, say, I'm ready. <clears throat> and he said, So is the kingdom of God, as if a man should cast seed into the ground and should sleep and rise night and day, and the seed should spring and grow up, he knoweth not how. For the earth bringeth forth fruit of herself. For first the blade, then the ear, after that the full corn in the ear. But when the fruit is brought forth, immediately he putteth in the sickle, because the harvest is come. And he said, Whereunto shall we liken the kingdom of God? Uh, or with what comparison shall we compare it? It's like a grain of mustard seed, which when it uh, is sown in the earth, is less than all the seeds that be in the earth. But when it is sown, it groweth up. And becometh greater than all herbs, and shooteth out great branches, so that the fowls of the air may lodge under the shadow of it. Hallelujah. We're talking about seed time and harvest, the process of faith. Father, in the name of Jesus, let this word come forth with anointing and power, God. <clears throat> No matter how our flesh feels today, God, we're trusting in your spirit, Lord God, to move in this place. Release a word that'll uh, cause us to leave out of here different than we came in, Father. Give us revelation, God, uh, that will change our lives, Father. In the mighty name of Jesus, somebody say amen. 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 Hallelujah. <coughs> hey, amen. Amen. Uh, these are parables here in uh, Mark chapter 4, and Jesus is teaching us through this parable the operation of the kingdom of God. And what we understand from this, and, and we could pick apart these parables and, and go into depth and talk about their meaning and things, but what I want you to see from what we read here in this scripture is that the kingdom of God operates on the principle of seed time and harvest. Two parables here, and there are many others that we can see, and we'll deal with some tonight where Jesus says the kingdom of God is like this, sowing a seed and the seed producing a harvest. Hallelujah. Uh, the kingdom is established on the principle of seed time and harvest, which means that everything you're going to get from the kingdom, you're going to get it through seed time and harvest. Everything. 
everything. There's nothing that you're going to get from the kingdom of God that you're going to get any other way than through the process of seed time and harvest. Uh, you can't bypass it. Uh, to get anything in the kingdom of God, you have to learn that you're going to have to sow a seed and believe for a harvest. That's how this thing works. God's not going to just drop it in your lap. You're not going to sit around and do nothing and receive everything God's got for you. God's got some stuff for you. Uh, and we can call that a harvest, but to every harvest, a seed is attached to it. And you can't get a harvest without a seed. So understand that. That's why we're teaching this. In the kingdom of God, everything you're going to get, everything you're going to produce, everything you're going to receive is going to come from a seed. And if you don't have a seed to sow, you're not going to receive anything from the kingdom of God. A lot of times you'll be looking for a miracle and God will give you a seed. Amen. You'll be looking for a healing and God will give you a seed. Or he'll give you a healing in seed form and you'll have to sow that seed and receive the healing. You'll be looking for a financial breakthrough and God will give you a seed and you'll have to sow that seed to get that breakthrough. Uh, so whenever you're desiring something from God, and I think we miss it a lot of times. And, uh, you know, well, I'm believing for a car. And then somebody gives you $100. And then you take that $100 and you go uh, to the grocery store or you go buy a pair of shoes or you go something. But what you missed is the car was in that seed. So you asked for a car, God gave you a seed, but instead of sowing the seed, come on, amen, hallelujah. You're wanting, you're, you're, you're wanting a, a miracle somewhere in your physical body, somewhere in your home, and then so all of a sudden God gives you a revelation. He gives you a scripture to turn to. And you might look at it, but then you kind of go off and just forget about it. No, that was the seed to your breakthrough. And God wanted you to sow it. Are you hearing what I'm saying? If you say, God, if you say, God, uh, show me a tree and God hands you an acorn. Is God wrong? Did God miss it? No. Hallelujah. He showed you a tree because the tree's in the acorn. When you're looking at the acorn, you're looking at a tree. Hallelujah. Amen. And so whatever's in the tree is in the acorn. It's just in seed form. And in order to get it from seed form to tree form, you've got to, you've got to sow it. You've got to plant it. Hallelujah. But the thing about it is this, children of God, if you have a seed, then you have the tree. Come on. If you have the seed, you've got the miracle. Hallelujah. And you need to learn how to shout over the seed. Amen. Elijah, I want you to go down to the widow woman's house in Zarephath. There's a widow woman there, and I've commanded her to sustain you. Amen. Yeah. He gets down there and she's got enough sticks and enough oil and enough meal uh, to make one more cake. Yeah. Well, I thought you sent me down here for her to sustain me. Yeah, she's got enough to sustain you, but it's just in seed form. You got to get her to sow it. Yeah. So he says to her, if you'll give me a cake first, then go make for you and your son and you're going to eat the rest of this famine and your meal and your oil is never going to run dry. Amen. He didn't send him to a rich widow woman that had a bunch of stuff stored up. And so she was doing fine in the famine. No, he sent him to a broke widow woman that was willing to give a seed. The reason God knew that widow woman could sustain Elijah is because he knew she was willing to sow the seed. Hallelujah. If you're willing to sow the seed, you can get anything you want from the kingdom of God. Come on, amen. 
If you're willing to sow a seed, you can get anything you want from the kingdom of God. And guess what the Bible says? The Bible says he gives seed to the sower. sower. So if you ain't going to sow, he ain't going to give you no seed. Right. And if you don't get no seed, you ain't going to get no harvest. You're not going to get no breakthrough. You're not going to get no miracle. Right. Amen. And he's not going to give anything to anybody that ain't going to do nothing. Amen. Amen. Are you seeing this? Hallelujah. Amen. So let's look at Mark 11 again, um, verses 22 and 23. Uh, we had these last Wednesday when we were talking, what were we talking about last Wednesday? We were talking about um, remaining in faith. Uh, we were talking about how your words ignite supernatural power or dunamis, the fuse of dunamis. That's what we were talking about. But I want to look at Mark eleven twenty two and 23 again, but I want to look at it in the light of how the kingdom operates in this seed time and harvest. I want to look at it in the light of seed time and harvest. Let's read that. It says, Jesus answering says, saith unto them, have faith in God. Everybody say that. Have faith in God. <clears throat> For verily I say unto you that whosoever shall say to this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. There's a key there. It doesn't say you'll have whatever you believe or it'll ha you'll have whatever God says. It says you'll have whatever you say. Now, depending on what you say is going to determine what you have. And what you believe is going to determine what you say. We're going to look at this uh, because this is all the principle of seed time and harvest. Now, the, the main principle of Mark eleven twenty three is this. Whatever you believe... Or whatever you're convinced of in your heart without a shadow of doubt, if you'll speak it, if you'll declare it, your words will ignite power to bring it into manifestation. Hallelujah. Your words will cause to come to pass by causing the power of the Holy Spirit and the dunamis that's in the spirit realm to begin to work to bring to pass whatever uh, your heart is convinced of and believes. Are you hearing me? Now, this works both in the negative and in the positive. It works both ways. And we'll see that here in a moment I'll show that to you but let's look at these verses and I want you to see in these verses the operation of seed time and harvest now verse 22 if, if Taj will throw that up on the screen verse 22 <clears throat> this is the root system this is the root system faith in God <clears throat> will always be the root system of whatever you produce in the kingdom of God. You will not produce anything in the kingdom of God without the root system of faith. Come on. Now, you can't have a root without a seed. Now, we know what the seed is. The seed is the word of God. Amen. Romans 10, 17, and you should be able to quote this on your own by now without even looking it up, it says that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the what? The word of God. So faith, which is the root system of the heart, is only going to be produced by the seed of the word of God. In the parable of the sower and the seed uh, that we're going to... Um, look at here in a moment before we get done it specifically says the seed is the word of God and then it says the ground it shows us the ground in that parable is man's heart amen somebody say this the word of God is the seed my heart is the ground 
So when the seed of the word of God goes into man's heart through the eyes and through the ears, it will produce the root of faith. That's how you got saved. Amen. Now, from the root of faith will sprout this conviction and this confidence. You can put verse 23 up there if you want, Mark 11. But from the root of faith that comes from the seed of the word of God will sprout Conviction and confidence in your heart, according to Mark eleven twenty three, that I have authority to speak to this mountain. And if I will speak to it, the power of God will cause it to be moved. Hallelujah. That conviction, that confidence that fills your heart comes from the root of faith that comes from the seed of the word of God. Now, from that heart will sprout the words, mountain be removed and be cast into the sea. Come on. Because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. That's seed time and harvest. That whatever is in abundance in my heart, amen, whatever I have stored up and sowed into my heart the most is what's going to come out of my mouth. Now, sprouting from those words is my miracle. Sprouting from those words is the miracle of the mountain being moved and cast into the sea. Does everybody see that? Does everybody see the, the system of seed time and harvest? The seed of the word of God produces the root of faith, sprouts into conviction and confidence of your authority and your power. And from that produces a confession that sprouts into my miracle that seed time and harvest got it yeah. hallelujah let's look at it in action mark chapter 5 verse 25 and a certain woman which had an issue of blood 12 years suffered many things of many physicians and spent all that she had and was nothing better but rather grew worse when she had heard of Jesus. Now, it doesn't matter where you're at. It matters what you hear. Let me say that again. It doesn't matter where you're at. It matters what you hear. If you hear the right thing, you can get a turnaround. Amen. Amen. It says, when she had heard of Jesus. So right here is the seed. Come on. Right here is the seed. Somebody begin to preach to her about Jesus. Somebody begin to talk to her about the power of Jesus, the miracles of Jesus, the possibilities of what could happen in her life if she got in contact with Jesus. And so this seed, this word, this sermon that came from whoever preached it. This seed went into her heart and now it's going to produce the root of faith in her heart. And so it says when she heard of Jesus, <clears throat> she came in the press behind and touched his garment for she said, if I may touch but his clothes, I shall be whole. So here's the root of faith sprouting up into a confident, conviction into a convinced heart hallelujah that if I can just touch the hem of his garment I shall be made whole that was the conviction of her heart from the seed that produced the root of faith in her heart then it sprouted up into words because verse 28 says that she said she said it 
Come on, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. She said, if I may touch but his clothes, I shall be whole. Come on. Verse 29, and what happened? Exactly what she said. She got exactly what she said. Straightway, the fountain of her blood was dried up and she felt in her body that she was healed of that plague. Here's the harvest. Where did the harvest come from? It came from the seed that was sown in her heart. It's seed time and harvest. She didn't get this miracle without the process of seed time and harvest. Come on, amen. Hallelujah. It doesn't matter where you're at. It matters what you hear. Quit trying to change your circumstances to make things better. Get a hold of a word. Start planting seed. Where? In the ground of your heart. So many Christians, come on, amen. I told you earlier at the beginning, you're, wanting, you're looking for a miracle and God hands you a seed. And you're like, what is this? This is not my miracle. And God says, grow it. Yep. Produce it. Come on, amen. amen. Hallelujah. Amen. amen. Thank you, Jesus. And so it doesn't matter where you're at, what's going on in your life. Quit trying to change things and start sowing seed into your heart. Start sowing the word of God into your heart and let the word of God begin to produce a miracle, a turnaround, a change in your life. Come on. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Verse 30, it says, Jesus immediately, <coughs> knowing in himself that virtue or power had gone out of him, he turned him about in the press and said, who touched my clothes? And his disciples said unto him, well, you see the multitude, they're all touching you. And, and you're saying, who touched me? And he looked around about to see her that had done this thing. But the woman fearing and trembling, knowing what was done in her, came and fell down before him and told him all the truth. And, and he said, watch what he says to her, daughter, thy what? Your faith has made you whole. Your faith has made you whole. Go in peace, amen, and be whole of thy plague. I want you to catch that. Your faith, woman, has made you whole. When Jesus said your faith has made you whole, he's speaking of this whole process of faith. I think we get it twisted. Just because you have faith, that's going to make you whole. No. The process of faith is what made her whole. Amen. Your faith, this your seed time and harvest, you heard a word, you meditated on it, it produced the root of faith. It convinced you that you would be whole if you touched the hem of his garment. Come on. Yeah. Hallelujah. You said, if I can touch the hem of his garment, I not might be whole, but I will be whole. I shall be whole. Faith doesn't produce any other kind of confession. And then she acted on that faith and she manifested her miracle. She harvested her miracle. Come on. If, you, if you're not if that process is not working in your life, your faith is not going to make you whole. Amen. You have salvation, saving faith. You've been saved. You see, you've got faith. To every man has been dealt a measure of faith. But, we, but it's the process of faith that involves seed time and harvest is what gets you your miracles. This makes sense to you. Amen. Hallelujah. Yeah, another way to say it is faith without works is amen. Hallelujah. But we've got to have this process. It's not just, it's not just, let me answer that. Let me respond to my own comment. <laughs> it's not just doing something by faith. 
well, I spoke it and nothing happened. You know, I twirled seven times and, and jumped up three times and shouted till I lost my voice and nothing happened. That's not what we're talking about. We're, we're talking about following this whole process of faith. See, the other, the other night when we were, uh, Sunday night when we was all here just shouting. Amen. But let me, let me say this to you. That shout didn't come at the beginning of church. It came after the word. What were we doing? It's, the, it's seed time and harvest, the process of faith. We were sowing a seed into your heart. It produced a root of faith. Your heart got filled with the confidence of that word. And then it just began to come out of you. To the point that I was trying to move on in the sermon or the message and I was trying to end it and, and everybody just kept shouting and I couldn't move on. And I was, nobody was asking you to shout, hallelujah. What was happening? Seed time and harvest. The root of faith that came from the word of God was literally producing that shout. And that shout, I guarantee you, started moving some things. Amen. Does that make sense to everybody? Hallelujah. It's, it's this whole process. Hallelujah. Now, I like this miracle because it reveals a couple things to us. And I, I'm going to move on from this and, and move into some other things. But I, I, let me just say this. I, I, I like this miracle because, one, it reveals that your faith alone or the, the process that I'm describing to you by itself can produce a miracle. Jesus wasn't looking for her. He wasn't coming to her. He didn't lay his hands on her. He didn't ask nobody to bring her to him. He didn't even know who it was that touched him. He just felt power go out of his body. And he knew somebody had touched him. Hallelujah. She got this on her own faith. That's why he turned around and said, your faith. Come on. Amen. This is how God wants us to live. God, thank God for the gifts. Thank God for miracles. Thank God for men and women who have gifts and they can come through and lay hands on you and, and you can get a miracle and there are faith healers and, and so on and so forth. Miss uh, uh, D got touched the other night uh, in the service um, through prayer and that's a great way. But the, the God's, that's not God's best for you. God's best for you is not to live off of somebody else's gift. That'd be like uh, having a dead battery and, and having to jump it off of somebody's uh, full battery every morning. You can't live like that. You lose your job. Amen. Once or twice is fine, but man, you got to get a battery that's charged up yourself. And that's what God wants you to do. This is the God's best for you to get to a place where you understand the process of faith and you can get your own miracle through the process of faith. Amen. If you'll get that revelation I gave you at the beginning, that's a powerful revelation. When you're looking for a miracle, God will give you a seed. Don't miss your miracle because you overlook the seed. If you're needing a miracle, start seeking for the seed. And that seed, may, that seed now what, what we're talking about tonight, that seed will come in um, word form. Many times that seed that he'll give you to produce a miracle will come through the word. He'll give you a word and you take that word and you meditate on it and you, and you pray over it and you speak it and you don't just read it one time and then throw it away. Forget about it. You write it down. You post it somewhere. You put it on your phone. You make sure it gets in front of your eyes on a regular basis and you just stand on it. Hallelujah. Amen. And that's seed. That's the process of faith. And that seed is going to produce a root of faith that's going to fill your heart. And when it does, it'll start producing a confession out of your mouth that will produce your miracle. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I, I'm all about speaking the word, but there's a difference in when you 
speak the word and you speak a word that you are absolutely convinced of, that's when the miracle is going to take place. Amen. But you got to get the seed in. Hallelujah. Now, <clears throat> the other thing about this miracle is it shows us that our faith draws on the supernatural power of God. Jesus felt power go out of his body when this woman touched him. She drew on the power of God. Her faith drew the power of God into her body and it healed her. You could, you could say that was the harvest. So faith draws. It's, it's, the, it's the bridge to the supernatural power of God. Hallelujah. And so anytime somebody gets healed, like through the laying on of hands, what's literally happening is the power of God in your spirit is coming out of you and going into that person. It's not, it's not coming from heaven. It's coming from your spirit. Where's your spirit? Somewhere in your belly, because the Bible says out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. And that's translated innermost being. So somewhere around in here is your spirit. And that's where all the power of God is. When, uh, uh, when Peter and John healed the man at the gate called Beautiful, the lame man, they said, they said to him, such as I have, give I thee. I possess your healing. Where? In my spirit. Now I'm going to give it to you. How? Through laying on of hands and through speaking the name of Jesus. Come on. Hallelujah. And so the, there, was, there was a transfer of power. So really when, when you believe for healing in your own body through this process of faith, seed time and harvest, really your healing is coming out of your spirit. And coming into your body. Are you hearing me? Now probably Miss D, when, when, um, when you got healed Sunday night, that most likely came out of your spirit because uh, you obeyed the word of the Lord and you began to walk until you, you began to walk in faith until you felt healing and you limped and limped and limped and limped and limped and limped and then all of a sudden you started you started running you started skipping and and you and then all of a sudden you were dancing and then all of us you know and and so that faith that faith drew that healing out of your spirit right here man. and so we're carrying this around Amen. It's not located in a box somewhere in this church. Amen. It's you. It's me. You're taking it home with you. You're going to work with it. How do we, how do we get it? How do we draw on it? The seed time and harvest, the process of faith. Amen. Exactly what we're talking about here. Now, this works both in the positive and the negative. Numbers chapter 13, y'all all right? Numbers chapter 13. But the men, uh, this, is, uh, this is what we preached on Sunday. I think this was part of our text Sunday. Might have been our text. <coughs> um, what did we preach on Sunday? Woo. Um, oh, my gosh. Yeah, yeah. Well, there was a title to it. I forget the title now. Oh my gosh. Anyway, don't matter. But anyway, we were preaching um uh we were preaching out of Numbers chapter 13. And this is where Moses sent the spies, the 12 spies over into the promised land to uh, spy out the land, to explore it and bring word back again about uh you know, what it looked like. It was it a good land, what the people look like in the land. Yeah, the God factor. And um, uh, bring back fruit so they could get a taste of the fruit and so on and so forth. But 
how many remembers that when the men came back, um, there were 10 of those 12 men that had a doubtful, negative, uh, what the scripture calls an evil report. And it says in verse 31, but the men that went up with him said, and this is their report they brought back to the people after they spent 40 days over there searching out the promised land. They come back across Jordan. They come back to the people. And this is when Moses is still leading them. And uh, they come back and told Moses and all the people, the men that went up with, uh, went up with them said, we be not able to go up against the people. They're stronger than us. And it says they brought up an evil report. Everybody say an evil report. Mm -hmm. An evil report of the land which they'd searched into the, uh, unto the children of Israel, saying the land through which we've gone to search it is a land that eats up the inhabitants thereof. All the people that we saw in it are men of great stature. There we saw the giant. Now, I don't think all of them were uh, that big, but they saw a few that were big. And so all the men were of great stature. And there we saw the giants, the sons of Anak, which come of the giants, which were in our own sight as, uh, and we were in our own sight as grasshoppers, and so we were in their sight. So here, what we have is we've got seed coming back. They brought seed back, but it's evil seed. It's the seed of doubt and unbelief. What did they say? We're not able. The land will devour us. The giants in the land, they're greater than us. We look like a bunch of little grasshoppers compared to them. And they're looking at us like we're grasshoppers. They're not afraid of us at all. They're not intimidated by us at all. We know that was a lie. Amen. Uh, Rahab uh, confirmed that in Joshua chapter 5. Uh, they were scared of the Israelites. They had no defense left in them. Amen. But they come back with this report and it was seed. These words were seed, evil seed. You know, if you'll, if you'll start identifying doubt, unbelief, and fear, if you'll start identifying it as, it as evil, you'll start resisting it. Now, you'll resist a drink. You'll resist a uh, Pornography, you'll resist lust, you'll resist a lot of things because you'll resist cussing, you'll resist anger sometimes because you think of it as what? Evil. This is not Christian like, this is not God like. But we don't resist doubt and fear. But the Bible defines it as evil. Huh? All right, hallelujah. And so look at the result. They brought back this evil seed. Look at the result. Because what did I say? This process of seed time and harvest works both in the positive and the negative. Numbers 14 and 1. All the congregation lifted up their voice and cried. <coughs> and the people wept that night. And all the children of Israel murmured against Moses and against Aaron. And the whole congregation said unto them, Would God that we had died in the land of Egypt, or would God that we had died in this wilderness? And wherefore hath the Lord brought us into this land to fall by the sword, or our wives and children should be, be a prey? Were it not better for us to return to Egypt? And they said one to another, Let us make a captain and let us return unto Egypt. So what do we see here? The seed of doubt and unbelief planted a root of fear in the heart of the people. They were weeping. They were crying. They were, they were upset. Come on. Hallelujah. It planted a root of fear in their heart, and that root of fear in their heart sprouted up into a heart that became full of unbelief and rebellion against the will of God. One of the reasons doubt and unbelief is evil is because it produces rebellion against what God's called you to do. It's the biggest enemy of the will of God. Amen. If you could conquer you, you could do a lot. And it ain't even the devil. It's just you've been conspiring with the enemy against your own life. 
Do you understand that? When you're in doubt and unbelief, you and the devil are conspiring against your own future. Amen. Hallelujah. And so there they were. It sprouted up into a heart that was full of unbelief and rebellion against the will of God. And that sprouted up into the words of we're going to die. We're going to die in this wilderness. Well, guess what? 40 years later, that's exactly what happened. Every one of them that murmured, every one of them that said we're going to die in the wilderness, they wandered around that mountain until they died. They got what they said. If you believe that what you say shall come to pass, whatever you say, you'll have it. Now, if you, if you follow God's process of seed time and harvest, and you get a hold of the word of God, and that produces a root of faith, and that faith produces a, a, a full heart of, of, uh, that's convinced of what the word says, and then it produces a confession from that, you'll have what God wants you to have. But now let me say this to you. The devil has to operate through seed time and harvest too. He can't, he, the devil has to operate the same way God operates. He can't operate any other way. So he follows the same process, only he plants different seed. Huh? He plants different seed. But he knows if I can get that seed in your heart, this whole process. See, I think it's safe to say that the seed is the most important thing. Remember, when with the issue of blood, doesn't matter where you are, it matters what you hear. Amen. Hallelujah. See, I can, I can give you revelation without screaming. Hallelujah. Some of y'all didn't think I could do that. I can't. The anointing flows in different ways. Amen. It's flowing differently tonight. But the, the seed is the most important thing. Say that with me. The seed is the most important thing. Yes, the seed is the most important thing. The words that you allow into the ground of your heart through what you read, through songs you listen to, through movies you watch, through people you hang out with is the most important thing to focus on in your life because all of those words are either going to be seeds of faith that sprout into a miracle or evil seeds that will sprout into death and destruction. It's not about sin as it's not a well I can't listen to that I can't hear that I can't watch that I can't because it's sin no it's not about sin as much as it is about what do I want to produce in my life and is that going to be a key to producing this in my life now some of you are in a crucial place where you need a right now miracle so it's very important what you what you put in Come on, amen. It's very important what you let in and who you let speak to you and what you listen to and what you watch. Because you're in a place where you need a miracle. You need something to happen. And so you need the right seed. Somebody say amen. amen. But what I have to understand is that seed time, the, the, the seed time and harvest process begins here's here catch this please let me slow down and say this here's what i have to understand this oh god hallelujah i can't stress how important this is the seed time and harvest process here's what you gotta understand it begins the moment that the seed goes in i want you to catch this the minute the seed goes in automatically the process begins you have to understand that that's very important if, if I take a seed, any, any seed, and I put it in the ground, the process begins. Whether I meant it to or not, whether I wanted it to or not, if I drop, drop a seed accidentally in the ground and then it gets in there, the process begins. I don't have to do anything else 
Just put the seed in there. And the process, are you seeing this? Go back to our opening text. Put Mark chapter 4 back up there. <coughs> what did we read earlier? He said, here's the kingdom of God. So is the kingdom of God. If a man should cast seed into the ground, watch this. The, a man should cast seed in the ground, right? Then what's he do? He goes and sleeps. And he rises night and day. He doesn't do anything else. All he does is cast the seed in the ground, and then he goes to bed. And he waits. Look. And the seed, and the seed, and the seed should spring and grow up. He knoweth not how. He don't have nothing to do with that process. He was involved in the sowing. Now the seed has the power within itself. Once it hits the ground, now it's got to hit the ground. It, it's dormant as long until it hits the ground, but once it hits the ground, that process begins. Without his help. I'm trying to make a point. Amen. The seed shall spring and grow up. He knoweth not how, for the earth bringeth forth fruit of herself. The earth will bring it forth. The heart will bring it forth. If it's in there. If it gets in there, the heart will bring it forth. Are you hearing me? Hallelujah. First the blade, the ear, after that the full corner of ear. But when the fruit is brought forth immediately, now the man's getting involved again. He puts in the sickle because the harvest has come. The only two places the man's involved is in the sowing and then the reaping. The process takes place on its own when the seed goes in. Now, that can make you shout if you're sowing seeds of the word of God and you're watching what you sow and you're ca taking captive every thought, that's, you can shout about that because what that means is there's a process that is going to produce a miracle that I don't have to, I don't have to stress any um, effort of my own self to make it happen. I just got to sow the seed, stay in faith and wait and then reap the harvest. Now, you shout about that, but oh, hallelujah. If you just let seed, though, go into the ground of your heart and you don't do nothing about it and you just let anything go in the ground of your heart, the process happens when it gets in your heart. Are you, are you following what I'm saying? So since the process automatically begins once the seed gets in, that means that you can't just let anything come in because as soon as it comes in, that's all your heart knows to do is to break the ground. How many know you put a wooden fence post in the ground? If you leave that wooden fence post in the ground, what happens? A year, I don't know how many years later, but you pull that, that post up. What happens? What, what, what's the bottom of that post going to look like? A lot of times the post begins to fall over. Why? Because the bottom of the post that's in the ground is rotted. Why? Because the ground is trying to break it. The ground's trying to break the seed open to get the root out. The ground will do, the, the ground's only doing what it's created to do. Your heart's created to take, come on folks. Your heart's created to take seed and produce out of it. And that's great if you're sowing the word, but if you're just letting anything come in, you got to understand the risk that's involved, that as soon as that seed hits your heart, your heart's going to start trying to germinate it. That's why we take every thought captive. If you don't do anything, if you don't regulate what goes in, if you don't put a filter on this and this at all, 
and you just let anybody speak into your life, let anything come in, I don't care what it is, you know, I, I'm not getting up here saying, you know, country music or rock music is sin and don't listen to it because it's a sin. I'm telling you, there's seeds in that stuff. You're trying to you're trying to strengthen your marriage and you're listening to a song about divorce. Huh? Hey, man. You're trying to strengthen your marriage and you're listening to a song about a hot lady with sexy legs. Hopefully you're thinking about your wife, but you may not be. You know what I'm saying? And so, but you got to understand that seed's going in and my heart's only going to do one thing with it. Try to break it down and produce it. Come on. Yeah. Hallelujah. I'm talking about seed time and harvest, the process of faith. The seed is the most important thing. <sighs> what do I have time to do here? Let's see. Hallelujah. Um, can y'all handle about 15 more minutes? Yeah. Y'all good? All right. Um, I'll try to keep it to 15, I promise. I promise, I really am, I promise. I promise. <laughs> In the parable of, of the of the sower and seed. So has everybody got that? My, my point in all of what I just said is you can't just do nothing. You can't just listen to everything and just do nothing, just let everything just come in. You can't do it. Because your heart is going to try to produce it. All right. Now, in the parable of the sower and the seed, Jesus explains the kingdom process of seed time and harvest in detail. But in his explanation, how many is familiar with the sower and the seed parable? In his explanation, he makes a point that the ground, uh, that the ground the seed is sown in is just as important as the seed sown. So uh, we've talked about the seeds important, but Jesus in the parable of the sower, seer, so the the parable of the sower and the seed, Jesus begins to talk about how important the ground is, the heart, because he describes four pieces of ground that the seed can fall into, that rep and each one of those grounds represent the condition of our hearts. He talks about the wayside ground. This is the walkway path. This is the ground that's too hard to receive seed because it's been walked on so much. Uh, this ground, the seed lays on it, and he says the fowls of the air swoop down and devour it before it can produce anything. <clears throat> the stony ground, he talks about the stony ground. In that ground, the seed goes in, but it doesn't get rooted deep enough because the ground's too shallow, and the, and the, the hard places in the ground block the roots from going in. So when the sun hits it, the plant dries up because it doesn't have enough roots. Amen. Then he talks about the thorny ground. This is the ground um, where there are useless things growing in it that are drawing on the nutrients of the ground that the seed needs in order to thrive. And therefore, since it can't get enough nutrients to survive because it's all going to the useless thorns, it gets choked out and it dies. And so there's only one type of ground the seed will produce lasting fruit in, and that's the good ground. And the good ground is simply the ground where there's nothing hindering the seed from taking root and growing. There's nothing in the way of it. It has time, it has ability to take root and produce fruit. Um... So as much as you need to focus on the seed, you need to focus on the condition of your heart. Come on, hallelujah. Now, I want to look, let me look at Jesus' explanation of this parable. This is one parable. Jesus didn't just leave it at the parable. He explained it. Like, 
he's like, I don't want y'all to miss this because this parable was about like, this is how you're going to get saved. So he said, I don't want you to miss this. And he, and he explains it in depth. So he says in Mark 4 and 14, he says, the sower soweth the what? So what's the seed then? The seed is the word. And these are they by the wayside where the word is sown. But, but when they've heard, Satan comes. Now he said fowls of the air, but the fowls of the air represents demons. It represents Satan. Satan comes immediately and takes away the word that was sown in their heart. Notice the devil comes and tries to devour the seed. Listen to me. The devil's doing everything he can to stop God's seeds. But now let me ask you this. Why is it that we're not doing anything to stop his seeds? He's working hard to stop the word of God from getting into your heart. What are you doing to stop his word from getting in? Come on. Hallelujah. Don't let the devil outwork you. But this is why you got to get healed. This is why you got to get healed of what people have done to you. And what life has done to you and what churches have done to you. Because the wayside ground is the ground that's hard and compacted and it won't receive seed because it's been walked on so much. Come on. Amen. How many knows what it is to be walked on? Hallelujah. I've been walked on. And when you get walked on enough, it hardens your heart. And you think that the hardness of the heart is protecting you. But all it's doing is keeping the seed of the word of God out. Come on. Hallelujah. And so you need to plow up the ground. When you've been walked on, when you've been hurt. You need to plow it up. I was looking in Hosea 10 and 12. You know, when you got, I was thinking, Lord, what, what's the key, man, to hard hearts? I mean, how do we get that ground plowed up? And I started looking at some scriptures. I stumbled on something in Hosea chapter 10. I was looking at verse 12, and I looked up verse 12. Uh, it came to my spirit. Sow to yourself in righteousness, reap in mercy. He says, break up your fallow ground. He's talking about your heart. The hardness, break it up. Get rid of that hard heart. Get rid of that bitterness. Get rid of that that doesn't want you, that, that wants to make you not come to church and not be uh, uh, worship the Lord. And break up that hard ground. Because you think that you're protecting yourself. Well, I'm not going to church anymore because I'm not going to get hurt. Them church people, you know, and this and, and, that, and, the, <clears throat> and this one pastor I had and, and, and I'm just tired of preachers. And, they just, and, you know, in that hardness and you think you're saving yourself, but you are just killing yourself. Yeah. You're keeping out the seed of the word of God that could change your life. Come on. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. So, so what do you got to do? You got to break up that ground. You got to break up that fallow ground and get rid of that hard heart. And I stumbled on this in verse 11 where it says, uh, I went back up. I just kind of looked up back at verse 11. because We'll put verse 12 up there. Sow to yourself in righteousness, reap in mercy, break up your fallow ground for it's time to seek the Lord till he come and rain righteousness upon you. But then I looked up at verse 11, put verse 11 up there. It says, and Ephraim. Ephraim as an heifer that is taught and loveth to tread out the corn, but I passed over upon her fair neck. I will make Ephraim to ride. Look at this. Judah shall plow. And Jacob shall break up his claws. Now, I'm not, I, 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 I don't really like to, uh, I'm not one of these preachers that just like to grab stuff out of context or anything, but man, when I seen that, Judah plows. I said, Lord, how do we plow up the hard ground of our heart? He says, Judah plows. <laughs> Judah, praise. Come on, folks. Hallelujah. How do we plow up the hard heart? You forget about what people said about you. You forget about what the church did to you. You forget about what mama said and what daddy did. And you start focusing on God and you start praising him. And if you'll start praising God, that ground will start to break up. 
come on, hallelujah. And that seed will begin to come in. Why do you think we praise and worship before we preach? Hallelujah, we're breaking up the fallow ground. Come on, amen. Verse 16, and these... I'm watching the clock. I know where I'm at. And these are they likewise, which are sown on the stony ground, who when they've heard the word immediately receive it with gladness. And they have no root in themselves. They have no root in themselves. Come on. And they endure for a time afterward when affliction or persecution arise for the word's sake. When affliction and persecution arise for the word's sake. What brings affliction and persecution in your life? The word. As soon as you start eating the word and getting the word and sowing the word in your life, guess what? Affliction and persecution is going to come. And you know what brought it? The word. If you don't want to fight the devil, then don't listen to the word. But I don't know how you're going to get your miracle without the word. So folks, take the word and know that it's going to bring affliction. But that's the only way I'm going to get my miracle. But he says, he says the stony ground is those that when affliction come because of the word, immediately they are offended. And so what happens is, whoo, hallelujah. The word you get on Sunday, it'll be tried on Monday. Come on. But what happens is in people's lives, the reason people are not seeing a breakthrough or a miracle is because every time a trial comes, they reject the word that they heard. And they say, well, pastor said this Sunday, but now look at what's happening. <laughs> right? Come on. And so what happens? You start rejecting it. And you don't give it time to get rooted in your heart. You can't have fruit without deep roots. And you can't have deep roots if every time that you get sick, well, Isaiah 53 and 5 ain't true. Every time something attacks your finances, you sit there and say, well, he said he'd supply all my needs according to his riches and glory, and I've been tithing, and, and I'm still broke. Come on. Hallelujah. Well, you know, I thought the blood broke the generational curses. I'm still dealing with God. You know, and, and so what happens is it, it, you receive the word with gladness. I mean, when it was being preached, you were shouting, jumping, running, tearing stuff up. I mean, you were going nuts. Hallelujah. But then when what you heard and shouted about on Sunday gets tried on Monday or Tuesday, you want to get mad and say, well, it's not true or it doesn't work or that wasn't for me. And you reject the word. And what you're doing is you're not allowing that word enough time to get rooted in your heart. Come on. Amen. Hallelujah. So what does that mean? That means if I want a miracle, I better be able to shout the same shout when the word is tried that I shouted when it was preached. So when you're attacked through the week, you got to give the same shout and you got to give the same praise you gave when you heard it. And you got to praise your way through the trial and praise your way through the affliction. And you got to hold on and you got to stand on the word. And what's going to happen, Pastor? Am I going to get my breakthrough? I don't know, but I do know this that word will get deeper rooted in you. Woo, hallelujah. I don't want, oh God, hallelujah. I'd rather have deep roots than a quick turn around. I don't know if that makes sense to anybody in this house. Hallelujah. <clears throat> See, in that parable, and I got four minutes, I'll finish this. In that parable, the son represented the persecution and affliction. Y'all understand what I'm saying? 
the son represented the persecution and affliction. So in the parable, he says the roots don't go down deep and it springs up real quick and then the sun hits it and it dries it up. The sun represents the affliction. But I'm, I don't have a green thumb, but I do know this, that the sun is also part of what feeds the plant. So it can grow. Come on, somebody. But see, when the roots aren't deep, the sun becomes an enemy and dries up the plant. But when the roots are deep, the sun becomes strength for the plant. What am I saying to you? I'm saying to you that if you'll hold on to the word of God that you've received, what the devil meant for your harm, come on, will actually work out for your good. Woo, hallelujah. See, when you got, let me say this, when you've got roots, afflictions and trials and persecution becomes your food. It becomes something that will actually feed you and strengthen you when you got roots. But when you don't have roots because you won't hold on and stand on that word through the persecution and affliction, then it won't. It won't feed you. It'll kill you. But if you hold on and let the roots grow, then it be, it becomes nourishment. And you can say, devil, you should have left me alone. Because <sighs> now that I've been through that, oh, hallelujah. You ought to, hallelujah. I'm, I'm never going to be the same now. There's things that you can try to throw at me now. You better step it up, devil, because if you throw that again at me, it ain't even going to bother me. Come on, hey, hey man, because I got some roots now. <laughs> You're going to have to turn the heat up to get me because I got deep roots. Come on, somebody. I got to move on. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And these are they which are sown among thorns, such as hear the word. I'm just going to hit these real quick. Uh, hear the word and the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches and the lusts of other things entering in choke the word and it becomes unfruitful. Thorns are the things that the ground is producing and keeping alive that are useless. What useless things are you feeding and keeping alive in your life? Let me say that again. What useless things are you feeding and keeping alive in your life? While the ground is feeding and nurturing the thorns the useless things, the seed that will produce life and breakthroughs being neglected and dying. So what cares are you feeding and keeping alive? What worries is taking up your meditation time that could be given to the word of God? What riches have you been deceived into going after and focusing on that's caused you to forsake the word of God and your divine purpose? And what are you lusting after that's distracting you from going after the word of God? Amen. And if you're not careful, you can be diligent at keeping things alive in your heart that need to die. While the word that needs to be alive is suffering, suffocating. Amen. Verse 20. And these are they which are sown. I'm going to end with this. And these are they which are sown. Uh, on good ground, such as hear the word and receive it and bring forth fruit some 30 some 60 some 100 i'm done uh with this let me just show you this a heart that is good ground that will produce a harvest is a heart that will hear the word that's the important part right doesn't matter where you're at matters what you hear and receive it somebody say and receive it you've got to receive it you can't just hear it you got to receive it one of the definitions of the Greek word that's translated receive here is take. Everybody say take. You've got to hear the word and you've got to take it. A lot of people hear the word, but not everybody takes it. Good ground hears it and receives it, hears it and takes it. And so the reason that the devil can devour it is because you haven't took it. And when afflictions arise and persecutions come, they can kill the, the miracle because 
you haven't took it. Woo, hallelujah. When worries tries to hit and distractions rise up to try to choke out the word of God, it can do that because you haven't took it. But if you take it, come here real quick. Um, just hold out your hand. Come up here. Just just hold out your hand like this. And don't do nothing. I'm just going to look. I, if, if I give Clayton this word, and just stay like that. Now, at any time, if he stays like that, at any time, I can come. You know, I mean, I can do this. I can, you know, just, you know what I'm saying? I can like, I can just, you know, I, right? But now, if he hears it and receives it, if he takes it, Come on. Hallelujah. You got to take it with that, which means that I'm not. Now he's not letting me steal it. Hallelujah. When you take it, that means I don't know if I'm making sense to you or if this helps anybody. Hallelujah. Uh, if it's a bad analogy or not. But when you take the word, what that means is you are not going to let the devil. You're not going to let persecution. You're not going to let affliction. You're not going to let worries. You're not going to let distractions. The rich of the, you're not going to let nothing take that word out of your heart. Hallelujah. You're not you're, what whatever you're doing through the day. You're not going to let that comment that that person said. You're not going to let that accident that happened on the way to work. You're not going to let what your teacher said about your kids. You're not even going to let your kids take the word out and make you focus on anything else but what God showed you. Come on, somebody. Somebody shout, take it. Hallelujah. Don't just hear it. Take it. There's a lot of people in the church. You know, people will come to church, and I got to hush, but people will come to church and hear the same word, and, and half the crowd will get free, and half the crowd will go home the same. And then and they'll keep coming and there'll be three or four or five people that'll get delivered and they're changing and they're growing and everybody else is staying the same and then somebody says well I'm going to find a different church because that church just ain't doing it for me and the reason that's happening it has nothing to do with what's being preached has nothing to do with the word it has to do with there are some that's hearing it and taking it and some that are just hearing it don't be a hearer and not a taker come on take that word take Take that word. That means that I'm not just going to hear this and go off and forget about it tomorrow. I'm going to meditate on it. I'm going to put it down in my heart. I'm going to see how can I apply this to my life. And when the enemy comes at me while I'm thinking on the word, I say, devil, I ain't got time for you. I'm going to take the word of God that says I'm healed, that says I'm blessed, that says I'm more than a conqueror. Come on, hallelujah. Take it and don't let the devil have it. Shout it, receive it. Hallelujah. Shout it, take it. Say, hear it. Take it. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. See, he quit taking it and almost got it. Hallelujah. But you know, really, if you really take it, I shouldn't even be able to grab it. Right? Hallelujah. Take that thing. Hallelujah. Like a running back going through the line. Hallelujah. Put it up under here and there ain't nobody getting that. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord, for this word. We thank you for the spirit that's been poured out in this place today through your word. We thank you for revelation, God. God, I'm believing that, God, this word, we took it. Come on, let's say it. Lord, I received this word. I take this word. I'm not giving it back. I'm not letting go of it. It's going to take root in my heart and produce a miracle. Oh, hallelujah. Say this with me. It doesn't matter where I'm at. It matters what I hear. Ooh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, I give you praise, God, for your word. Thank you for seed time and harvest. Thank you for the process of faith. Thank you for showing us the process to get our miracle, God, get our deliverance and get our healing. Father, I give you glory and I give you praise and honor in the mighty name of Jesus. Let's give God one more praise in this house. <laughs> Hallelujah. <clears throat> Amen.
I, I apologize. I'm battling a little bit of the flesh tonight. Hallelujah. Um, 